What's going on everybody? My name is Nikita Nazarov. I am the hockey analyst and this is the hockey channel for all hockey fans to be in. Now in today's video, I'm back for one of these videos where I'm going back to my old format of doing videos like this, having the background music as well in there. And uh, I'm just pretty excited to do videos like this again because I got my phone fixed. You know, I'm glad that I'm able to record videos again. Now, today's topic is going to be discussing the Toronto Maple Leafs and then most likely trading uh, Kasperi Kapanen in the offseason. Now, some of you might be big fans of Kasperi, Kasperi Kapanen. You know, he's still a pretty uh, young player, 23 years of age. And, uh, you know, he's done very good things, um, you know, throughout his career already. He's won, a, I believe, a gold world junior championship with the with team finland he is you know had some playoff experience already of course he is the famous guy that was drafted by the pittsburgh penguins and got traded from the pittsburgh penguins to the toronto maple leafs in that big phil kessel trade at the time back in 2015 and you know we didn't really know what Kasperi Kapanen was capable of. We knew he was a first round pick. We knew that, you know, there was a high ceiling for him as a player, but we didn't know what kind of a player he was going to be. And so far in the NHL, he's been a pretty solid player. I wouldn't say he has exceeded expectations or he's been, you know, I guess been underpaid per se because he did earn that pretty good contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs last offseason and of course that came at the expense of some players having to leave their team now if I go to cap friendly right now his contract currently stands at a so he's got two more years left after this year he's 23 years of age at 3.2 million dollars per season and uh, he's gonna be becoming again a, an RFA come the end of the 2021-2022 season so I mean, I mean there's still some time for Toronto to figure out whether they want to trade him or not now the reason for me thinking that Toronto is most likely going to trade him when the offseason hits for every single team is because first off they need some cap space to re-sign some of their defensemen that are going to be hitting either UFA status or RFA status if you look at their defensive group right now uh, the only, you know, guys that are extended past next year are Morgan Riley, Jake Muzzin, Rasmus Sandin, uh, Callie Rosen, Martin Marinson, and Justin Hall. But that's not a great backhand. They need a better backhand than that. Um, you know, you got obviously Travis Dermott coming off his RFA deal. He's going to be an RFA uh, with no arbitration, right? So that might be a good thing for Toronto. Um, Tyson Berry most likely going to leave via free agency and Cody Cece probably a guy that's going to go as well. He's carrying a cap hit of $4.5 million, which they can use elsewhere if they do have additional cap space. But again, uh, you know, there's going to be some other moving parts that are going to have to, you know, be made as well. Not just Kasperi Kapanen, but maybe potentially guys like Alexander Kerfoot, as well as maybe Andreas Janssen, they're going to have to move on as well from if they really want to have a very solid defensive corp. Because the problem with Toronto over the last few years has been their defensive group. And I don't know if you think that offense is everything nowadays and if you think speed is everything nowadays, it's re it really isn't. Look at the two teams that made the Stanley Cup Finals last year it was Boston and it was St. Louis. They're both not the fastest teams in the world. They're both not the youngest teams in the world. They're both not the greatest offensive teams in the world. I mean, sure, Boston has their first line, but sometimes they have struggles scoring goals past that first line. The St. Louis Blues, they're a team that, yes, they have Tarasenko, O'Reilly, Perron up front, Shen. You know, you can go down the list of very solid players, but it's not like they are a Tampa Bay Lightning level offensive team. It's not like they're a Washington Capitals level offensive team. They're just a team that's very well coached, a team that has physical presence, that has veteran leadership and has very solid defensemen. You look at the right side, it might be the strongest right side in the NHL. You got Alex Petrangelo, you got Colin Pareko and you got Justin Falk. The left side might be a bit weaker, uh, you know, uh, potentially if Bo Meester comes back, that's definitely going to help things uh, or help things out with them on their defensive side. Uh, Vince Dunn is a very good young defenseman, um, but 
And they do have a plethora of really good players all around their team. And their goaltending is not weak by any means either. And the situation with both of those teams and what they have in common is they do not seem to allow as many high scoring chances against as do the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's about as many problems as Toronto is going to have. I mean, they don't have problems scoring goals. They don't have problems with their young players and them having to act up to something. And they certainly do not have, you know, locker room issues. So really none of that is uh, something that they have to worry about. So they have to be grateful in that sense. But also, you know, you have to remember that while the Toronto Maple Leafs, again, are a team that's young and they're kind of built for today's NHL, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have all the right pieces that it takes for them to be a championship level team, which is why some, some people are nervous right now based on their chances against Columbus. So we'll see what happens with them. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen certainly is a very interesting target for some teams out there in, in, in the NHL that are looking for a 20 slash potentially 30 goal scorer in the future, a 60, 70 point player in the future as well, one that's very promising. I mean, he did put up 44 points in the 2018-19 season along with 20 goals. Now this past season, you know, his points per game average did drop a little bit from about 0.56 to 0.54, but that's because the season stopped due to, you know, a certain global event happening, which I'm not gonna mention in this video because I'm gonna get demonetized. But with that being said, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, they clearly know where the problems lie and they just got to work with what they have right now. I mean, honestly, you know, they can't really go out there and, you know, start making trades right now all of a sudden with all these seven NHL teams that are completely out of the play in round. But regardless, the Toronto Maple Leafs certainly have questions to answer next year. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with their roster in the offseason. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new and if you're a hockey fan like me. Also, make sure to rate this video either by liking or disliking the video. And also, don't forget to consider sharing this video with your friends or on social media. It does truly help the channel grow. And thank you so much for watching this one. My name is Nikita Nazarov. I am the Hockey Analyst, and this is the Hockey Channel for all hockey fans to be in. I'll talk to you guys soon.